everybody. It's Paige Evans and I'm so excited to be here with Michael's teaching how to embellish this small memory explosion box. While we're waiting for everybody to join, you can go ahead and type in the chat where you're from. I would love to know where in the world you are. Look at this, Colombia, California, Michigan, Bologna and Italy, Germany. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Wow, I'm so overwhelmed, guys. This is amazing that we are all um, coming together for the love of this hobby and scrapbooking and documenting our memories. There's Colorado Springs. That's that's where I am. Well, I'm not in Colorado Springs, but I'm in Colorado. I am in a suburb of Denver called Highlands Ranch, and I work from home. So behind me, you can see some of my layouts. I love scrapbooking. So I take pictures mostly of my kids and I put paper and stickers together. And before they go into scrapbooks, I display them on my wall so that I can enjoy them for just a little bit longer before they go into albums. Hey Danielle, this is Felicia. I, uh, Paige, this is Felicia. Can you do me a favor? Can you log back in on your phone? Yeah. Working? Let me get you back in really quick. One second. And everyone, while we're getting her phone back in, we just want you to know that this class is being recorded and you will be able to visit it on michaels.com forward slash classes, as well as Michael's YouTube channel within 24 to 48 hours. Can you see from my phone now? Let's see. And I know this is, we're just beginning this one, so I try, like, truly apologize, but it is back on. I see it now. Yes, we are. Hi again, everybody. Okay, yeah, so as she said, if you aren't able to catch this live or if you miss some of the steps, it will be available about 24 to 48 hours after, after the video has ended. Um, it's going to be about one hour and in real time, it takes about six to eight hours to completely embellish one of these boxes. So I've gone ahead and pre-cut a lot of the papers to adhere onto the sides, but I will demo some of the, um, not harder parts, but some of the parts that I've received a lot of questions about. So let's get started. This is the small memory explosion box. There are four different explosion boxes available in the recollections end cap. There is a large white memory explosion box. There is a large craft memory explosion box, a small white and a small craft. And this is the small white. And so what I love is when you take off the lid, it explodes. This one's going a little bit slower, but you get the idea. And then you can splay it open and you can see it's got these super cute heart corners. So I thought it would be really fun to make a gift for my husband for Valentine's Day since that's coming up in just a few days. And so from the end cap, I have grabbed almost everything. And as we're going through and embellishing and adding the papers, I will let you know exactly where they come from. So in the center, we're just going to start, I'm going to grab my box. So here's what it looks like when you get it from the end cap and you can just take off the label. And here we go. In view. So if you have a ruler, you need to measure. So here we go. We've got it's just over three and three quarters by three and three quarters. 
And the paper that I used here in the center is from the 12 by 12 paper pad. There are two 12 by 12 paper pads and online one is just called 12 by 12 and the other one is called sprinkles. And so I, I'll show the sprinkles one when I grab a paper from that one. So here from this paper pad is the green paper with these silver hearts. So you can see it's got shine to it. So that's super fun. And then I'll grab my paper trimmer. And I said it was three and three quarters by three and three quarters. So we'll find here. We'll cut it. Quarters by three and three quarters. Perfect. Now, when it comes to adhesives, you can use a variety. You can use your favorite. What I love to use with these boxes is actually liquid glue, so then it could get all the way to the edges and make sure the papers don't come up on the edges. So grab liquid adhesive and I don't want it to come sp spilling out. There we go. Across the middle and we'll stick it down right in the middle. Okay. Now I know that the bottom of the box probably isn't gonna be seen very often, but it's there, so we might as well embellish it. So on the bottom of the box, I used this blue paper with silver stripes, which you can find in the 12 by 12 sprinkles pad. So that's this one. Let me find it. Okay, and it should be the same size, but I'm just going to double check. Three and three quarters by three and three quarters. So we're going to cut another piece the same size. Three and three quarters, just a little bit bigger. Awesome. We're just going to stick this on the bottom. And then the next step is we're going to, I'm going to show you how to cover the hearts. That's what I had the most questions about is how, yeah, how you cover this kind of not a wonky shape, hearts. I love using hearts on my scrapbook layouts. Okay, so we'll stick that down. Let it dry for a second. Okay, so for the hearts, you're gonna wanna grab a piece of scratch paper and a pencil. And I like to utilize straight edges whenever I can. So these hearts in the corners have kind of two partial straight edges. And so what I do is I align it right on the corner of this scratch paper and move it up so we can see it better. Okay, so go like this and fold up the side of the box so you can see that it is aligned on the edges and then fold it up on this side so you can make sure that it's aligned on the edges. And then I'm gonna go ahead and trace the heart around the two lumps. And cut it out with some scissors. Is this called fussy cutting? I don't know if this is technically fussy cutting. Usually when I'm fussy cutting, it's cutting out an image. This is just creating a template. But then it kind of becomes fussy cutting because you trace and cut out eight times. But I'm one of those people who loves fussy cutting. Give me a good project, um, especially you know during the past year, scrapbooking has just kept me sane, you know? All right, here is my heart template. 
that I've cut from scratch paper. And there are eight hearts on the box. You've got four fronts and four backs. So four plus four is eight. And I'm gonna grab, let's see, I'm looking at my little cheat sheet where I wrote down everything. So I'm cutting it out from the white floral paper in the 12 by 12 pad. So not the sprinkle pad, but the regular 12 by 12 paper pad. There is a paper with florals. If I can find it. Oh. Sorry, it's from the other paper pad. So it is from the sprinkle paper pad. So we have this paper with florals in the corners. And so I am going to cut out a heart from one of the corners to utilize the floral shape. Um, if you don't want your pencil marks to show, you can flip it over. And I'm gonna trace it and cut it out. So I've made three explosion boxes so far. I made a large one for my daughter, Jane, just filled with favorite moments of her. And I did flip through it on my YouTube channel so you can see all of the layers and I did a blog post so you can see all of the supplies. I did one for my son, Fox, and now I'm doing one for my husband. So it's a great idea to create one for every member in your family. Okay, so if I'm re replicating this original box, the hearts go on this bottom one right here. So the bottom left corner. And what you do is, again, I just prefer liquid adhesive for this, putting it around the edge because it folds up and sticking it in place. And then when you flip it over, there might be some excess around. Yep, can you see? Hold it up a little bit. There's some excess paper around the edge of the heart. And so that's why I have my craft knife and a cutting mat. Now be very careful with this tool because it's, it's just so sharp. Um, and then carefully trim around any excess. To concentrate. I'll be right back. I'm gonna cut through all the way. So I'm gonna press a little harder. I just imagine, <laughs> just imagine cutting myself in front of all of you. That'd be so sad. Okay, here we go. Let's see, I see a question, eight hearts, how many three and three quarter inch squares? So far, it's it's just two. Um, I can't recall, I can't remember off the top of my head if these first flaps are also three and three quarters, but we'll get there next after the hearts. Okay, so we got one heart covered. And I went ahead and I cut out the rest of the hearts already. Grab those so you can see. And if you want to know exactly which paper pads they came from, I wrote down on the back. There are four six by six paper pads in this end cap. There's ones with, or this one has glitter paper. This one is called foil six by six. This one is just regular six by six. And this one is double sided. So from these hearts, from the paper pads. So let's see, this one's actually from the 12 by 12 paper pad. I think I'll grab that one. Okay, so these, this green floral is from the 12 by 12 paper pad, as well as this purple floral heart. 
This purple with silver sprinkles is from the regular six by six, as well as this yellow one with silver hearts, this pink one with silver polka dots, this blue one with silver um, hearts, and this pink with scallops is from the sprinkle 12 by 12 paper pad. Um, so when it came time to pick the papers for this box, I didn't want it to be completely pink, like traditional Valentine's. So I went with kind of pinks and florals and anything that had to do with hearts and love. So, and, and you know me, I need to use all of the colors all the time. So by not limiting myself to just pinks, I was able to add in all of these colors and that just makes my heart happy. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and adhere all of these hearts to the heart corners. So I'll just quickly add adhesive around the edges. I find it's easiest to cover all of the sides and all of the flaps first before adding any photos or embellishments. So that's what we're doing. Let's see if there's any questions I can ask or answer while I'm gluing these. And go ahead and post a question. I can there was a question wondering how do you organize all of your paper products? Um, I mostly keep them in Ziploc bags by collection so that everything will go together as I'm scrapbooking. Everything will match. Um, my card stocks, I don't know if you can see behind me. Um, behind me, I've got racks where I keep all of my card stock. Um, hopefully that answered. <laughs> I think so. But so far, everyone is enjoying and following along. I'm looking at some of the videos of those who actually had their videos on and everyone is concentrating, following along. Oh, the question is, do you need to score the hearts before gluing them onto the I This is my third time making this box and I haven't usually, I mean, it just kind of folds it on itself. If you want to have a crisper line, you can totally score it first. I don't even know if I have a, I do have a scoring tool, but it's not on a paper cutter. It's a separate, a separate thing. But do you have to? No. Can you? Yes. Awesome. Okay. The I'm gonna flip it over so that we can adhere the hearts on the back. I'm gonna flip my example over too so that I can, so I can see, let's see. And Paige, can you repeat the uh, paper pads you were using? The paper pads? Yes. So it's the foil six by six, the glitter six by six, I'm going to use that a little bit later. The double sided six by six. This one's just called six by six, no extra words. This is 12 by 12. And this is sprinkle 12 by 12. So there's six pattern paper pads in this um, end cap, and I used papers from all six of them. Okay, it over. Um, liquid glue, I use a couple, this one, this one I actually just got in the mail yesterday. Um, it's iCraft Ultra Bond, but I also use Sticky Thumb from American Crafts, or I've used Tombow liquid glue. Why are there two parts to each wall? It seems like she's using two boxes, one on top of the other. Um, there's two layers on this, if that's what you mean. So there's the inner flaps and the outer flaps, just covering both sides of every flap. 
instead of cutting by hand, can we use the Cricut machine to cut out the shapes? That would definitely speed along the process. Um, I could probably design a cut file. That's a really good idea. Like to have a cut file available that cuts all the pieces for you. Genius, I'm so glad you're here. All right, last part and then we'll fold them so the creases get there. Goodness, time flies when you're having fun, huh? Okay. You probably wanna let these dry a little bit longer <laughs> than I'm doing. All right, well, that one got a little smushed. So here we go, when you fold them in, this. there we go. Okay, so some of the edges are, you know, not flush. I trim those really quick. Again, with the craft knife, please be careful with this step, trimming off the excess part around the heart. Can. Yeah, I definitely think um, having a cut file would make this go faster and be easier. Okay, so now that all the heart corners are covered, we can move on to the inner flaps. And it's basically just like we did in the center. We need to measure, I, I think um, it might vary just slightly between boxes. I mean, they'll technically all be the same, but you just wanna measure just in case. So this one is three and it's just, sorry, it's just slightly bigger than three and three quarters by three and three quarters. So I am going to grab a paper from, let me look at my little list that I have going on here. The first flaps from the pink floral from the foil six by six paper pad, okay. So what I'm doing here is I am covering all of these first papers with floral paper. So when you're trying to figure out which papers to use, um, you might wanna like go with a theme or a certain colorway. For this first set of flaps, I wanted them to all be florals. So there are quite a few florals in this collection, which is awesome. I love floral papers. So this pink floral paper, again, is from the foil six by six pad. And it was three and three quarters by three quarters. It was slightly larger than three and three quarters on one side. And you'll want to save these, um, these strips because I used them on the lid three and three quarters, slightly bigger than that by three and three quarters. Yeah. Hey Paige, while you're cutting, yeah. um, some are wondering what type of uh, craft knife are you using? Uh, exacto, an exacto craft knife and it's pink because I love pink. All right, so I'm putting it over here and it's hanging off the edge up here a little bit. So I'm just gonna trim it down more. Okay, and then what I did is I used this same piece of paper as a template to cut the rest of them. So I wasn't, um, I didn't have to cut it slightly bigger than that. I just used this one as a template. Gotta find my papers. Where did I put them? There they are. Here's my papers. Okay, well, we're gonna save this piece of paper for the lid a little bit later. And let me show you the papers that I used. 
for all the sides. So this one, again, was from the foil six by six paper pad. This one, the white with the floral is from the double sided six by six paper pad. Grab that one. It's even got a little picture of it on the front. So I definitely know it came from that one. This blue floral paper came from the foil six by six paper pad, which is this one. This orange floral came from the foil six by six paper pad, as well as this purple floral. And then these two shiny papers came from the 12 by 12 paper pad. So that's this one. And again, this video will be available to watch as many times as you need if you want to make your box exactly the same. But I always try and tell people to, you know, make it your own. If you want to change a paper, you totally can and should. If these florals, you know, aren't your jam or aren't going to go with your theme, then pick different papers. That totally works. That's why there's so many options. And like ways you can create this. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to a double-sided roller because my liquid adhesive is making it bunch. I'm just not letting it dry enough. So I'm using a double-sided adhesive roller to attach these papers in place. So it was the pink floral here. I'm gonna rotate it and grab the blue floral. It's almost flower season, guys. I'm so excited. I posted on my Instagram stories yesterday that the daffodils are just starting to pop out of the ground. It's like literal living proof that flowers are on the way. What's your favorite flower, guys? When I was little, we, um, I grew up outside of Seattle and it rains a lot there. So I always said that my favorite flower was a sunflower because it made up for the lack of sun. <laughs> okay. Hold on, that one got a little wonky. Peel it up and stick it back on. There we go, okay. That's looking pretty pretty, huh? Okay, so the, the flat behind this one is the exact same size. So you'll cut eight of that three and three quarter by three and three quarter, plus this center piece and the bottom were also three and three quarters square. So that's 10. Um, and so for this one, I was going to show how to cut the paper again. So it's the same size. I'm just looking on my sheet to where that one comes from. So I'm not searching through all. Let's see. It's from the foil six by six, which is right here. Here's the paper. So this is white with kind of a silver scallops design on it. And it was three and three quarters just slightly larger than three and three quarters. What would that be? It's like three and seven eighths by three and three quarters. And save your scraps. I have many tutorials on my YouTube showing how to use paper scraps. Okay, so here we go. We'll just stick that on. crooked there. Okay, in the back of this one, I refer to my original is this silver stripey paper. It's so holographic. Look at that. Catching the sun. Woo. All right. I would love to know. You can tell me in the comments. I'll try and glance up once in a while to see. Have you already made one of these boxes? And if so, who did you make it for? Or what did you document? And, or if you haven't made one yet and you're currently working on one, 
What's it for? I would love to know. First time I made one for my mother-in-law for Christmas. That's so sweet. For your daughter's birthday, birthday. Yes, there are a lot of birthday themed elements in this collection. So it's really good for birthdays. Okay, is that all of the sides? I think so. Oh, I missed one. This one right here. Just making sure. Yep. Yeah, okay. Last one. We're going to glue this baby on. This is my first one. Not sure who it will be for. Probably just me. You know what? And that is okay too. Pretty much everything I make is just for me, right? You know, my family, they come, they look through their scrapbooks maybe once a year. Uh, and when they do, that just makes my whole my whole day when they look through their scrapbooks and appreciate them. Okay, so we've got the first layers completely covered. We are almost done covering all of the layers. So now it's time for the, the back layers. And let me grab, let's see, demo back first flap from white, silver. Oh, that wasn't right. It's from the glitter. We're gonna grab the glitter papers. Okay. Okay, so again, I kind of like to keep things similar when it comes to the layers. So here, all of the flat, we've got all flower papers. In the hearts, we've got like a solid color with some type of silver glitter going on. And so for this last flat section, I want to cover them all with glitter papers. And that just keeps things consistent. It keeps, it gives it like a um, good, design and I think it's just more aesthetically pleasing to have to have a rhyme and a reason for what you're doing. So I'm going to measure the back flap and it is just under four inches by just under four inches. And I'm gonna grab a gold, not gold, orange, an orange glitter paper. I think there's five or four, one, two, three. There's four of every color in this glitter paper pad. Four by four, grab my paper cutter, orange paper, and cut it to four by four. Okay. So there we go. I think I'm going to trim it just a little bit um, down because I want the hearts to be able to fold in. So I'm just going to trim it a tiny bit there off to the side. Okay, just a little bit more. <laughs> There we go. No, maybe even more. Oh my goodness. Okay. Third time's the charm, right? And Paige, while you're doing that, I'm looking at the comments and you have a lot of first timers making the explosion boxes. That's so great. I'm so glad you guys are giving this a whirl. You know, once you make one, you'll want to make, you just won't want to stop, you know? And since there's four different styles to choose from, Make at least four and then some. Okay, so we got the orange glitter cardstock, not cardstock, but orange glitter paper. And then I cut um, one from the other colors. Oh, I already did an orange one. I need a blue one still, but we'll, I'll do that in a second. And it actually goes on the other, other side if I'm going to copy my first one. So the orange goes here and then the gold down here at the bottom. Okay. Hold on, I'm just making sure. Okay, it looks like that's all right. I'm doing things aren't exactly the same. It's all right. It'll it'll still look good at the end. 
Okay, so I'm going to put the yellow down here. Also, when I'm making these, I try not to have two of the same color next to each other. So if you're looking at this, you can see that we've got blue, pink, purple, and green and orange and then yellow. So I don't have the purples next to each other. I don't have the pinks next to each other. I'm trying to create an overall rainbow. And really quickly, I'll cut out a blue for that top section. It's four, four. You're almost done covering all the flaps. Okay, and then since the back side is the same, and those are actually the outer edges of the box, so let me show you how it all folds up right now. You'll want to make sure that the, the first flaps stay behind the hearts, if that makes sense. So you'll put the folded hearts in front. Fold up. So once you put the lid on, it's a box. So we're going to cover the outside edges and have those papers cut already. So it's the same. Okay. So we have the this yellow paper with the white stripes is from the Sprinkle 12 by 12 paper pad. So again, that's this one right here. This green floral paper is also from the Sprinkles 12 by 12 paper pad. And this pink with silver stripes is from just the six by six paper pad. There was one more, this purple with silver dotted stripes. Let me look at my little cheat sheet where I've got everything written down. That is from the foil six by six paper pad. So I am gonna cut that one. Here is the paper. Four by four. We'll glue those on. Uh, if you want to add tons of texture and interest, you could machine stitch or hand stitch around all of the edges. Now that I've said it, I really want to try it. I love adding machine stitching or hand stitching to my projects. I think it just adds such a personal handmade touch. It takes a long time. Some of my hand stitched pages have taken over 24 hours and I don't do them very often, but they're some of my favorites. I just, I really love the results. All right, last one. All right, these are not in the right spot, are they? This one goes over here. And again, that's just, I'm trying to keep colors um, not next to each other, just to create that overall rainbow vibe. So I'll just peel that off. And if your box tears, that's okay because it's just getting covered up. Okay. All right. Look at that guys. All of the flaps and all of the sides and all of the heart corners are covered up. So now we're gonna um, work on the lid I'm going to set the box aside. I'll bring in the lid. So look at this. It says, Happy Valentine's. Okay. What's the direction? 
Oh, the struggle is real. Okay, there we go. Happy Valentine's Day. And I've got three rolled flowers and then a little title. So first we're gonna cover it with pattern papers. And let's see, from the double-sided pattern paper pad. Making a mess, guys. Go find my paper pads. There they are. Okay. From the double sided six by six paper pad, we've got this floral paper. So, again, I'm just going to measure and cut. So, with my handy dandy ruler. Just over four inches by four inches. Just over four inches. Just over four inches. Get that glued on. And then for the sides, remember you want to save those, uh, the floral paper strips from that first layer of papers. So the pink one right here, and then we'll measure the sides. So it's, I think it's just under one inch. So it's about, it's between three quarters and an inch by four inches. So I'll trim it and see if it fits just between three quarters and an inch by four. And you'll cut four strips to this side, to this size. And I've cut those already somewhere. Gotta find them. There they are. So here's all of my paper strips for the sides of the lid. So I'll go ahead and get those glued on. Now, if you're making this at home, you'll, you know, just want to spend a little more time. I'm just kind of being willy nilly about adding adhesive, but you want to make sure to get all the edges so they don't crumple up. So rotating, we have this pink one. Rotate again, it's the orange one. And last but not least is the blue one. Cool. Um, so technically you could cover the inside of the lid. I just, I haven't, but you totally could. That's an option. And then even the inside of your lid would be pretty. Okay, I want to demo how to, how to do these rolled flowers. If you don't have a die cut machine or a cut file, there's still a really easy way to make rolled flowers. You want to use double sided pattern paper so that it's pretty from all sides. And I'm going to grab a pink, pink paper. So it's this pink paper and it has rainbows on the back. And I have a hot glue gun plugged in over here, all ready to go. Just grab a pair of scissors and you're just gonna cut a big spiral into it. And it doesn't have to be perfect whatsoever because once you roll it up, all of the imperfections of the scissors just go away. I'm just cutting a spiral into this paper. And then trim it off right here. Okay, and then I'm going to start at the end and roll it up into a tight spiral. And again, this is one of those things. There's just something about working with my fingers and my hands and creating something out of paper that brings me so much joy. So like these rolled flowers, I, I could just make hundreds at a time and use them. Okay, so once you've rolled it up tight, you want to 
let it release a little bit. And this gets a fuller flower. And then once it's once you like the shape of it, just hold it in place. And then you're gonna tip it over, grab your hot glue gun, add a little dab right there in the center, and then hold it in place. There you go. There's one little rolled flower that took just 30 seconds to make. Okay. I'll do two more just to show real quick. There's a yellow, yellow paper with sprinkles. I'll make this one a little smaller so I won't cut quite as large of a spiral. There. Same exact thing. Spiral it up. Approximately how big is the circle for the flower? Um, this one, the pink one was about three inches and this one is about two inches. The ones I made on the original lid, they might have been a little bit bigger. So you can play with the size of your spiral. Okay, let it release a little bit to make it fuller. Tip it over and then add a dot of glue. For the leaves, I just hand cut those from, again, a pattern or a double-sided pattern paper. So in this same six by six paper pad, you can see it's right here, this green dotted one. And to make the leaves, all I did was fold this paper in half or just to get a crease. And then I cut half of a leaf, just like that. There we go. And I cut three of those. Perfect. So there was one more um, flower, but we're kind of running out of time here. So um, what I did was I grabbed one of the doilies. So there's holographic doilies. There are five of this shape and five. And don't get me wrong, I love the holograph, holographic this. <laughs> but I wanted to use the solid white size side. And it was this one. So there's two designs, if you can see. And I chose this one for my lid. So I put it up here on the top right corner. I added my flowers, tucked these leaves in, and then I'll show you um, what the title is made from. So there's a pink heart clip. There's a package of heart clips. These are just so adorable. It's my and my daughter's favorite product, I think. They just, they look like candy on these paper clips. So I added a pink one here. This word happy, let me bring this up a little closer so you can see. It is trimmed from one of the die cuts. There are three packs of die cuts. One is birthday, um, birthday shapes and icons, but there's also flowers. And I did go through all of the products on my YouTube channel so you can see um, exactly what comes because there's 42 pieces inside. And if you want to see every single piece it's on my YouTube channel, these are phrases and journaling spots. And this is kind of travel themed, but there's also other pieces in it that would work for not traveling. So the word happy, it comes from this happy birthday die cut. And all I did was trim off the word birthday. So you could still use this on a separate project. So save your scraps and the word happy. And the word Valentine's was made with these pink alpha stickers. And I layered it on top of a green, a green tag. So the tag comes perforated with four colors. And then last but not least, this word day comes from 
the 12 by 12 sprinkle pad. It has two of every paper, so I was okay with deconstructing one of these. See this um, die cut right here? I cut out just this word day, and so the whole title becomes Happy Valentine's Day. Okay, I'm gonna bring the box back in and show you some of the things that I did to embellish. The large memory explosion box comes with pockets. This one doesn't have pockets, but it does have heart corners. So there's different things about each box. Um, but I really do love the pockets. And so I did make a pocket in this version right here. And I'll show you how I did that. From the sprinkle 12 by 12 paper pad, this very first paper, I just cut a little triangle. Here, a square here. Cutting a square first and then I'll cut it into a triangle. That's just easier to do with my paper cutter. So then you, oops, you align the top and the bottom corners right here and just trim it to create a triangle. And then to turn it into a pocket, you'll want to use super sticky double-sided tape, or you can use liquid adhesive. And all you do, let's see, I gotta find the edge. Put adhesive on the right and bottom corners. If you put it along this edge too, you'll just have a triangle <laughs> sticking on your box. And that's, that's cute too, you can totally do that but I wanna make a pocket. So if you only add adhesive on two sides for a triangle or three sides for a square or rectangle, you'll turn it into a pocket. So I've got the adhesive added, put it, grab my box again and put it right along here. Now you've got a custom pocket in which you can add tags. Tuck right in here. If you look carefully at my box, you might notice some sequin trim just along here. That's it's just a little extra something something. There is a package of aqua baker's twine mint um, sequin trim and pink circles. And so I just adhered a little bit along this edge. As far as photos, if I had, um, if I were just making this on my own, this is exactly how I would do it. I would cover everything first, all of the papers, and then I would come in with my photos. Now the question is where my photos went. <laughs> oh, there they are. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, I get asked a lot where I get my photos printed and I actually print them at home. I have a Canon Pro 100 and I use Adobe Photoshop so I can just drag and drop my photos and resize them to any size that I want. So I printed seven photos at three inches square. And these two photos right here are very similar, but I still wanted to include them both. And so what I did is I created a flip up right here. And to do that, I just use a little piece of washi across the top and in between. And so for the photos, I love having lots of photos and um, I just went through and I kind of did like color on color. So here you can see I was wearing a blue shirt. My husband's wearing a blue shirt. These flowers are blue. So I thought that the photo would look best right there. And then on the next section of flaps right here, again, uh, I was wearing green or kind of a blue and this paper is blue. So I used that one there. And then for example, here I'm wearing orange or pink. So it would look good there. So when I'm placing photos, I like to try and find colors that go together. And that's why I adhere my photos where I do. A couple more tips. Um, I just want to 
talk about with this explosion box is adding embellishments onto the hearts. Because these hearts go inside of this box, you can actually get really dimensional with your die cuts and you can use thick foam squares to attach them. And that just gives a lot of depth and dimension and ooh and ah. Even for example, right here in the center, I'll tilt it so you can see there's a lot of dimension. So you can actually build this up really high. So um, you could even put treats inside. I just encourage you to try using different depths and thicknesses of adhesive to make it more, more fun. Um, let's see. There are also photo corners. Let me grab, let me find them in my pile right here. Photo corner stickers, and I just love adding those onto almost every photo. So you'll see here, again, with the color on color technique, I've got blue photo corners on this photo that's on top of the blue paper. Um, here, it's a contrasting color this time. There's green photo corners. And let's see if I did more. Yep, here we've got the pink photo corners. And I just think it adds, you know, a little pop of color, a little extra something. Um, wrapping it up, again, I know we weren't able to finish embellishing this whole entire box. I will have a blog post on my blog where I have listed every single step and every single um, supply that I use. So if you want to make your box exactly the same, you can. And here are a couple more explosion boxes that I've made. Here is the same one. It's not as decorated and that's okay. If you want to keep yours more simple and plain, I mean, that's great. There's no right or wrong way to decorate these. Here is one that I am working on. This is one of the large memory explosion boxes. So this one has three lids and I'm documenting our day in Epcot. So it's got three lids, which makes it three times as fun to open up. There we go. So there's the large memory explosion box and I've done one more. Here's the large one. So I have flip throughs of these on my YouTube channel. I've got them on my blog. I will bring in that information right now. So if you want to follow me on social media, you can find me on Instagram at in my Facebook group where I give away a free cut file every week. You can find me on YouTube. Again, so you can see all of these explosion boxes up close. And I have an Etsy shop. If you make these explosion boxes and you share them on social media, make sure to use hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag Michaels class. Wow, guys, I, I honestly want to cry because um, this has been such a special hour. I can't believe it's already over. It just flew by. Um, thank you each and every one of you for being here. I hope you enjoy creating these memory explosion boxes and either keeping them for yourself to cherish your memories or giving them away as precious gifts. I know whoever would receive them would absolutely love and cherish it. And thanks for being here. Again, you'll be able to watch this 24 to 48 hours from now. Okay, have a great day, everybody. I'll see you around.